So I am just on the BJJ Fanatics website, and what's amazing is now we've already talked about uh, gravity is your friend, but there are two other instructionals that you might want to talk about. Recently, I had the opportunity to work with PJJ Fanatics guy, and now we have three instructionals out there. We have escapes and engineer for guys over forty. If you're forty That's or me. more, hey, dig into it. Gravity's your friend. Sit up sweeps. Been there for some time, and is really, really getting a lot of attention. And then we have the smash the knee folding pass. Now, that's one of my favorites. So, if you haven't um, looked at them, take a look. BJJFanatics.com. Welcome to Raw Radio. Wow. And we are live. Here we go. You Man, were very, that was a struggle. You were in your own little world there uh, for a second. Listen, that was good. The cameras have, were rolling. We should have put you that met out there. Me? Have you met me? Well, you're I always am, in your I am Yeah, in but my that own was world. usually you can you can access the uh, the real world pretty pretty quickly that today it was rough there for a second <laughs> it's like is he having a seizure <laughs> uh get an yes. ad call 911 yep uh, i don't know what the ad would do for your seizure but i'd throw it on you anyway if it'll let me shock you i'll do it um we just had an That'll amazing conversation you. with somebody who's been around for a really really long time in jujitsu uh and is made that change from more traditional martial arts in the very early 90s, uh, even before the UFC, first UFC, into jiu-jitsu. And uh, so what an amazing conversation. Check out the episode. You'll see in the title of this one who it was. Um, (laughs) You're not going to say it? No. What's his name forbidden? (laughs) Well, I mean, as soon as they see it, they're going to know who I'm talking about. do Do you think Matt is known in jiu-jitsu community? I think he, yeah, so I don't think, not in the, well, here's the deal, right? The dude owns a massive organization. So is he known in the jiu-jitsu community? Absolutely. Is he known to young people that aren't a part of his associations? Probably, maybe not, right? The newer guys, the younger guys, even the guys that have been doing this for a while, blue belts, purple belts might not know who he is. I didn't know who he was until an older gentleman introduced me to him. I won't say his name, Dan Zuccarelli. What's up, Zuc? Um, um, so that's how I found out about Matt. And then I found out, so I actually found out about people. I knew about people who worked in his organization, owned gyms under the SBG banner um, before I even knew about Matt. So it took a while. But that's why I asked. Uh, I I think, unf- and I don't know if this is by design or not, but I think, uh, unfortunately, Matt is not, he doesn't get as much credit as he should, in my opinion, as far as Jiu-Jitsu contribution. Mm-hmm. One, SBG is one of the largest organizations, teams, you know, in Jiu-Jitsu. But two, put that aside for a second. You know, I think Matt's contribution to Jiu-Jitsu by his teachings, his instructionals, what he's done on the and off the mat from cultural perspective, it's it's a fundamentals of what what we have as a result of it today. Mm-hmm. And I think <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I I just dry coughs for some reason. I don't know. Um I think that that's kind of a consequence of this evolution, very fast-paced evolution of jiu-jitsu that we are experiencing in the last five or ten years. Yeah. Probably the last five years, more like three to five. Some of these old school guys, um, I think they f- fade away or they never appear because of the oversaturation of information that we have with the new age, flashy, awesome, flowing Counter based jujitsu. Yeah, you and know? I don't think, I don't even think it's exclusive to jujitsu. I think it's a lot. It could be anybody. You know, we've talked about the legends and, and everything kind of get forgotten uh, because of the information overload that we mm-hmm. have or because, you know, you said the words flashy uh, thing, you know, that, that eye candy that, that takes away the interest from 
the important stuff or the important people or the mm-hmm. fundamentals or the foundation of whatever you're talking about, mm-hmm. you know, and, and jujitsu is just a part of that whole, um, I don't even know what to call it, but just the way people live their lives now. So if it's jujitsu, if it's music, well, if it's anything, any sport, um, you know, politician, somebody's always done it before you mm-hmm. or before that person, they just maybe did it a little differently and you don't, you didn't know that it's all been done before. Yeah, yeah no. And, and I, I told you this before, but that's like the main driver for me personally to do this show, to do this podcast, like yeah. have these conversations, having documenting some of these stories, experiences, their life, and really putting out there in a, in a formal format so others can actually hear and, and learn who these people are. Like, I often think about it. How many people really in jiu-jitsu, like if you take everybody who trains jiu-jitsu in any capacity, young, old, fast, slow, doesn't matter, everybody, all together, how many, what's the percentage of people that really know who Chris Howder is? Right. Yeah, like who, very low. What's well, we don't know. Well, I, I'm curious. I, I think know? it's low. I think it's because like, I've spent time who on the knows? mat, and I bet you that. Well, I don't know. Again, I shouldn't be betting anything, but I'm curious who, how many. What's the percentage of knowing who Matt Matt Thornton is? Right. You know, Henry Atkins. I well, mean, I think Henry, Henry is getting more popular because he's doing a phenomenal job, really pushing his knowledge out there and yeah. presenting it to others. But even then, well, how see, many people really know who he is? Right, and. Very recently on the match, somebody brought Henry's name up, and to them he was new he, because his social media following mm-hmm. has changed so much and his mm-hmm. online presence has changed so much very recently. Um, and they were like, have you ever heard of this guy? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> Where uh, have you been? On right. The and, I, and my like, you know, my knowledge of jiu-jitsu has grown exponentially just because of this podcast, so it's not like I'm not saying anything bad or taking anything away from that person who said that. Um, but it's like, yeah, that yeah, Henry is who you should be looking at. You mm-hmm. know, you shouldn't be looking at Instagram and checking out all these crazy things. Henry is what you should be watching. Mm-hmm. Henry's going to get you to the next stage of your jujitsu where the, the guy that's doing, you know, all these obviously well-rehearsed counter for counter stuff that you've taught, you talked about recently. Um, that's not going to get you to your blue belt and beyond um that's type of stuff you should look at way later look at somebody like henry now to get you to where you need to be do you think people like that's still stuck in my head how many people know the names like how many people know these people but do you think that people know who hicks and gracie is like do you think they know who helio gracie was do you think they know i think maybe hoist gracie is more popular because of the explosion of jiu-jitsu and the fun but like really do if you mention to somebody Hoy's Gracie, well, do you think they would know what it is? Like now, I'm no. starting to think about I, well, it. Like, yeah, and it's funny we were we had an idea of what we were taught. We had our takeaway. I know and, we have to switch we're, back. To yeah, that, no, we're not. We're not gonna because we're eight minutes in. So we'll come up with a whole new title. <laughs> well, if you wanted to but, hear a takeaway on our original topic, you won't, won't because Gary's running out of time. No, it's just <laughs> we're eight minutes in and we haven't even brought it up yet. So let's keep talking about this. Do people do people know who Hickson is? I think. You know, okay, so jujitsu has exploded, and I think people are getting into it because of what they see um, on television, online, through MMA. So I think they get into it not knowing who the legends are. They get into it knowing who everybody from, you know, Conor McGregor to Gordon Ryan. That's what they, they're they seeing. That's what's out there. Those are the huge personalities, right? Mm-hmm. Um And then once they're in a class for a while, once they're learning jujitsu and they realize how different it is from what they've seen, Mm -hmm. then I think they start finding out who these people are. I hope so. Yeah. I I really hope so. Or they just go through, you know, learning their techniques and they're, and they're, they're blinded or they have blinders on. Um, But I think as you discover jujitsu and you start digging deeper into it, you're going to see these names pop up. I hope so. And then if you're doing any kind of your own research or anything, or if jujitsu is really uh, an interest, a real interest to you, you'll be like, oh, I keep seeing this name pop up. Let me go check this guy but out. But what if the name doesn't pop up? 
Because let's be honest, like Henry Atkins is very, you know, he's he's out there, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm glad he is. He needs to be out there, you know, for the sake of what we do and right. continue, you know, exposing his teachings out there. But right. many of them are, are not. Yeah, I mean, Hickson is not. Like, let's be honest, Hickson is not. He doesn't have a, you know, very powerful social media vehicle. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he's on social media, but he's not popping up everywhere. He's not doing instructionals every other month. He's not. There's plenty others who do by far more than he does. So do, does that mean that people will not know who he is? Uh, I could come to that. But I'm like I'm looking through our older episodes, right? Ricardo Laborio. Uh, yeah, how many people know R- Seneca's Laborio? Seneca's going to be in town, right? How many people know about Seneca? Uh, get, that's a fun episode. Listen to that one. Um, how many people don't know who Horian is? How many people don't know who... Uh, pff- who else? And I'm going now. I'm going pretty far back. Uh, Sean Williams, right? You should know who Sean Williams is. Uh, let's keep going. Chris Howder. Yeah. Uh, Robert Drysdale. Robert Drysdale. I mean, it, listen, we've had big names, on and I'm the not show. just promoting the old. Episodes. No, 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 no. We are talking these about are names, big, right? And there's yeah. plenty of other names we haven't had on the show, and we want to. But it's like, <clears throat> you know, how many, like it. it I think it's really mind blowing because of the saturation of new age jujitsu plus some of the old school guys, they don't put a lot of emphasis on social media. Mm -hmm. So like there's these two factors, right? One is the flood of the new stuff. And two is the no information from the old school guys. Right. There is this factor of disappearance. It, It just kind of fades away. Right. And and so whose responsibility is to bring awareness about some of these some of these people? Anybody who cares about it. Well, I suppose you know, right. it's your it's I putting it the responsibility of someone else or on someone else is a is kind of a big thing and not maybe the coolest thing to do. But if you have a passion for it and if you think these people are important, well then maybe in conversations on the mat you should be like hey check you should you like that so and so did it you know 20 years ago you should check it out you know and and look at what he's done or um anytime somebody talks about fundamentals you know be like hey check out henry check out um hickson check out chris check these people out see what they've got to offer or you're gonna like it and i think the it you know, the best part of all of this, and I think probably the most underestimated part of all of this, that all these, most of these, not all of them, but most of these guys have their own digital platforms that you can literally learn from them in mm-hmm. a remote way. Yeah. Right. At this point, I think <laughs> legit almost every instruction, every instructor yeah, has an instruction. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's like. If you don't have one, I think you're behind the curve at this point because everybody else does. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah. But it, it somebody depends. said that somebody said that it's like if you're not on BJJ Fanatic, are you are you even, <laughs> are you even doing anything? <laughs> but the point to, for me with that is, um, it may be generational. There's a lot. It of, is. You know, I'm sure it is. Well, there's a lot of guys that don't care about social media. They don't care about mm-hmm. doing things online. They don't see an advantage to it for themselves and that's fine um i don't think it is actually. i think it is it's not i don't, I don't, think, I don't think it is i don't think it's their response i don't think it's their responsibility to to put themselves out there i didn't say to put yourself out there mm-hmm. but if you i think ignore now we're going into a different topic but i think if you ignore a digital way of learning today you are jipping yourself of opportunities to learn no, I'm not talking about the the person learning. I'm talking about the person sharing. Oh, right. Oh, okay. So if my, somebody, my, if, my bad. Okay. Yeah. I so if somebody's 60, okay. 60, 65 years old and they've been doing jujitsu for forty five of those years or longer, I don't think that they have the responsibility to to put themselves out there digitally. Uh, do they have the responsibility know, to sh- to to share what they know? I, they I do think- if they want jujitsu's history to be known, right? You look at somebody like what Robert Drysdale did with the the book and, and, and the film and 
uh, he wanted to get to the real stories, right? And make sure that a lot of these people weren't excluded from the jujitsu history so that it wasn't just one family uh, who did it all, that these other people were important, that they have made huge contributions. Um, and that to me, I guess, though, so if you take up any endeavor, then you, I guess it's now, now it is your responsibility. So I think it's a, the responsibility of an instructor to say, Hey, I learned this from so-and-so. And so that lineage is important. That helps keep these people from fading away. You know, whenever I do research for a guest that I don't know anything about, you know, I hit all these different websites. One of them always has the lineage. It's like, Oh really? I didn't know. Or I see this name and I've seen that name pop up a couple times before I have a podcast. It's my job to maybe not necessarily tell everybody about that person, but at least for me to investigate that person a little bit, to give myself more information on the younger, the next generation that so the, I'm researching. So you don't think that the older generation guys, jujitsu guys, have a responsibility of being on digital platforms? No, their job is done. Stop making old people work. <laughs> this, con this country makes people work into their 80s. Give them a break. <laughs> They've done their job. Let them relax with their grandkids. Let them roll with their grandkids. I, listen, I'm I'm with that. They 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 deserve you know time off and all that. But if from from the opposite side of the spectrum now, if their journey is not documented some way, and I suppose this is why we you and I we well, are doing this right right. But I'm thinking this way, okay? Like you know, I like I'm really glad to see Hickson having his own online platform. Mm -hmm. Like I, I subscribe to it. I, I see what he does. You know, I like, you know, I see some of his content flowing through. And I, I'm really happy to see that, not only because he's getting compensated for for the product, but also because it's being documented. Mm -hmm. His vision, his skill, his his mindset is being documented in some capacity. Because at some point somebody we won't be able to document this because unfortunately we all have expiration dates. Like it's just it is what it is, right? So but like like I wish somebody, you know, like they're, they're old tapes of Helio Gracie teaching jujitsu. You know, that's like I think gold. Now, mm -hmm. does it, you know, work for competition worlds? Well, why not? But I Listen, I know myself that there are some details that you can find these these things that nobody else teaches. Yeah. And I think this is where guys like Hen Henry Atkins come in really well, powerful, think, right? Yeah, I think so. There's, I think we're looking at two different things here. Are we looking at it from teaching jujitsu or are we looking at it from history? And if we're looking at it from history, I think that it's our job, not theirs, to pass it along. And I'm not talking okay. about the techniques. I'm talking about who they are, where they were from, okay. who they taught, um, because they've already done it. Okay. Hickson already taught Henry. So if there was no Hickson online, we would have Henry. Now Henry's going to, you know he what I mean? He needs to carry the torch. I yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah get it. and pass it. it along. Yeah. And, uh, and so these people um, are doing that. And that's what I mean by, like, the, the, the older generations. They've done their work. They've done their job. Um, it's for you now to pick it up yeah. and run with it. And you, now, you and now, the, and what, how do we run with it? Well, we run with it here, right? With yeah. the microphone or you do on BJJ fanatics. Yeah. That's how you pass it along. And, you know, we're storytellers when you, I had a, a teacher in college tell me that, that the re, you know, people always ask, why are we here? Why are humans here? Why? And he was like, it's to tell stories. That's why I believe we exist. We tell stories. And I think that, that, you tell the jujitsu story multiple ways, passing it down, teaching it now, the new digital age, putting it out there for everybody to see, sharing it that way. So I, th I just, I think that it's, it's always the next generation's responsibility. I, I agree. I agree. Right. I got to give it to you. That was a ah, good, that's a, you made a good point. Yes. I agree. And I maybe someday in the future, well, we'll talk about our original topic. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, if you're listening to this and you know a somebody with a great story, let us know. We would love to have him on the show. As we mentioned just a moment ago, the big point behind the Roll Radio is really to document and tell the stories of some of these guys that don't have those opportunities. So we would love to hear from you. Yeah. Shall we wrap this up. up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Later. Peace. Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. 
If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care.